I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to this Cisco certification practice exam. This one's designed for those of you working on your CCNA security certification or studying for the ISCW exam for your CCNP certification. As always, feel free to take a few extra minutes here to pause the video if you need a few seconds to think about an answer. We do have a 10 minute time limit on YouTube, so we'll go through the questions fairly rapidly and then review the answers at the end. We're going to start off with kind of a discussion question here. Just define the term DMZ as it pertains to network security and name three different common network devices that you'll typically find in a DMZ. One network is different from another, we certainly understand that, but there are certain devices that we do typically find in DMZs. Need you to identify the true statements out of these four dealing with stateless and stateful packet filtering and which ones consider the TCP connection state, really whether it's stateless, stateful, both, or neither. Another short answer one for you here, does the Cisco IOS firewall feature set act as a stateful filter or a stateless filter? Take a look at this list and tell me which of the following are considered parts of the IOS firewall feature set. Five different features there. From these statements, identify the true statements regarding the AP, the authentication proxy. Whether it is part of the firewall feature set, whether we can create per user or general security profiles, and where we can store them. We'll take just a moment there and then head to question six. Boy, ACLs just follow you everywhere. I tell all my CSynth and CCNA students that. And here, I'm asking you to tell me what wildcard masks are replaced in ACLs by the words host and any. Very important detail and more like I said ACLs will just follow you for the rest of your Cisco career so if you're not comfortable with them yet you need to get there. And speaking of that, in this particular ACL line which is incomplete and there's a little bit of a clue, what does that dollar sign indicate? at the very beginning of the ACL line itself after the config prompt. What does that indicate? Basically, and I'm speaking very basically here in generalities, how does an iOS firewall prevent a TCP SYN attack? What are the options? We'll spend uh, some time with a future tutorial just on that subject. What does the term punch a hole in the firewall mean? When you hear someone say that, what exactly are they doing? And of course, I mean logically, don't physically do it or your client's going to get a little upset. And finally, when exactly does the router traffic option in this IP inspect configuration do? Why would I have that there? It's one you don't see all that often, but it is important to know what that does. So those are our 10 questions. Let's go over some answers. The DMZ, you know, it's easy to think of your network as the inside, you know, our local near area network and everything else is outside. But when it comes to firewall configurations, we've got a third area. It's optional. It's a DMZ. And from an IT standpoint, a DMZ is the part of our network that it is exposed to outside networks. Typically what you'll find there are email servers, uh, e-commerce servers, DNS servers, perhaps web servers, and FTP servers. You can find other devices there, but those are just a few you can find in the DMZ. Let me scroll back up so we can take a look at all the options here. Uh, the answer is B. Stateful packet filtering does consider the TCP connection state. Uh, a stateful firewall will monitor the state of the TCP connection and also the sequence numbers, and they do that by keeping a session table or a state table is what you generally hear it referred to as. Then here, uh, question three, the Cisco IOS firewall is a stateful filter. Out of these, there are three major components to the IOS firewall feature set. We have the IOS firewall itself, we have the intrusion prevention system, the IPS, and the authentication proxy. And speaking of the authentication proxy, here's a question on that that we had. And the true statements here, 
A is true. It is part of the iOS firewall feature set, as we just mentioned. Uh, B is true. It allows the creation of per-user security profiles rather than just more general profiles. Therefore, if B is true, C has to be false. Uh, and so is D. E and F are also true. So it's A, B, E, and F. Uh, because those profiles that we mentioned can be kept on either a RADIUS server or a TACX server. Now our old friends host and any here with ACLs and remember the host that is replacing a wildcard mask of all zeros that's matching one particular address and the any option is a, a wildcard mask of all ones and that of course is going to permit any. The dollar sign here simply means that the command you're entering or viewing at that time, it can't be shown in its entirety because it's so long. And you have to kind of get used to that, especially when you're using extended ACLs, which you can see here, that's what I started using with the number 150 there. And again, it doesn't mean anything about an illegal command, it just means that the entire command cannot be displayed. Basically here, the iOS firewall can monitor one of three values to detect when this kind of attack is underway. The overall total of incomplete TCP sessions, the number of incomplete TCP sessions in a certain amount of time, or the number of sessions on a per host basis. And when any of those three, th excuse me, when any of those thresholds are reached, uh, we can either start blocking the incoming send packets for a certain period of time or transmit a reset to both parties in the oldest incomplete session. There's a lot more to TCP send attacks than just that, but that's a general outline of it. And we'll talk about defenses against that kind of attack in a future tutorial as well. Punching a hole in the firewall, you're simply opening a port that was previously closed. And again, if you just need it for a moment, don't forget to close it when you no longer need it to be open. And then finally, the router traffic option here, if you're going to inspect traffic that is actually generated on the router itself that you're writing the configuration on, you need to include that router traffic option at the end of a particular IP inspect statement. Hope you enjoyed this quick video quiz for CCNA security and ISCW students. Make sure to visit the website, www.thebryantadvantage.com. Uh, well over 275 free tutorials as well uh, at this point. Videos, practice exams, lots of great stuff. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to look to the right and check out all my other videos. And again, I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you at the website.